from me. The enemy is trying to destroy. The enemy is trying to bring me down. But thank you, Jesus. When I walk in the threshold, hallelujah in this place. When I got into God's house, thank you, Jesus. I felt good in my spirit. It didn't predicate on what you thought, but I felt good all by myself. Hallelujah in here. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of the enemy. I don't know about you. I'm sick and tired of him trying to hold my praise down. But I give God all glory. I give God all honor. No things ain't lining up. Things are not panning out. Things are not how I want them to be. But thank you, Jesus. I'm going to hold on to your unchanging to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah to be praised. He is worthy anyway. Hallelujah. For that we honor him. Father God in your mighty name Jesus. Lord we come before your presence on today. God asking that you speak to and through me God. That as I bring forth your word today. Lord that it fall on fertile ground. Lord, that it reap a harvest in your lives and your people. God, I just want to be used by you. Lord, hide me once again under your anointing. Deny self in every way on today. God, and bring forth your word as it comes out of my mouth, God. Let it begin to change the situations. Let it begin to go from heart to heart, God. Let it begin to settle in the atmosphere of the problem. God, we thank you for your word because the Bible says that even when the earth and heaven is going away, your word shall stand. So God bless your word on today. Lord touch me from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet every avenue of my being God I want it to become under subjection to your will speak through me on today God. Let your anointing flow fresh. Hallelujah in this place. God and I thank you. I worship you and I magnify you because of word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart shall be acceptable in your sight God why because you're my Lord and you're my redeemer God and I thank you in Jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 we thank God on today for blessing us once again to be in his house to come and hear what thus saith the Lord on today Amen. God is just worthy. Amen. As I said, to be praised. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. And we thank him for just <clears throat> allowing us to assemble ourselves one more time in the presence of the Lord in this house and in this dwelling. But God is just awesome and he's worthy. Amen. Of all that we can do. But we give, uh, again, praise and give glory and we give honor to his mighty name. <laughs> But just want to uh, draw our minds, amen, to uh, just a, a passage of scripture on today, amen. We're just going to have a passage of scripture in which we are going to look at, amen, <clears throat> found in the book of Job, found in the book of Job, and some call it the uh, book of sorrows, but the book of Job. Amen. We're going to look at one scripture, but I, I just want to say something. Um, 430 years. Mm -hmm. I want to say 19 years. I want to say about a span of a week. Mm -hmm. yes. I want to also say three years. I want to say 13 years. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand it's been seven years years, 40 years, 20 years, about two and a half minutes, and also eight seconds. Now, just throwing out those numbers to you, some may have caught on to a few of them. Some may have understood a handful of these dates or these years or increments of years in time or in time spans. 
But just let me bring it to uh, your attention just for a second. In 430 years, Israel uh, was in bondage. For 19 years, Hannah suffered being barren. In about a year or about a week or so, Job uh, had to sit there while uh, his friends uh, talked about him. Uh, for about three years to 13 years, we find Joseph went from the pit to the palace. Uh, he went from the pit prison, Polypher's house palace. But we find that in about three years to 13 years, Joseph had to endure something. We find about seven years, Pharaoh had a dream. And he dreamed about uh, uh, different things that was going to happen. In 40 years, uh, we understand that that 40 years is synonymous to the children of Israel and how they wandered in the wilderness that shouldn't have took them that long. We understand about 20 years uh, uh, when I said uh, we, we, we know that Lot uh, uh, found himself in a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. We find that in about 2.5 uh, minutes, uh, we find uh, that, and again, this is this is just uh, me because this is how this message came about. I was watching some TV uh, uh, one day, and I remember seeing uh, the strongman contest, and, and the strongman had to hold on to these two pillars, uh, and he had to hold them up uh, for as long as he possibly can. And the longest person who held them up, I believe it was like two uh, two point five minutes, uh, and he held them up long enough to win the championship. Then we find that eight seconds, just eight little seconds uh, is what uh, uh, when, uh, and I like watching rodeo, is, is when uh, the, the Bronco, uh, the guy who's riding the, the, the Bronco uh, he has eight seconds to last on that uh, back of that wild horse uh, in order to win the prize. Oh stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this on today. In each one of these occurrences, uh, every last one of these people had to wait. Amen. Every last one of these people had to, to hold on to, to something. We find uh, in uh, Job's uh, situation and in this uh, foundational scripture in Job 14 and 14, it says, if a man dies, shall he live again? And he said, in all my appointed time, will I wait? He said, tell my change Come. Now, I understand that some of us, uh, uh, I'm going to be talking to a specific group of people. I'm going to be talking to some that may find themselves uh, in this category of people. And the category is called hold on. I don't know about you, but I find myself in the hold on category because each time we go throughout life, uh, we have to understand something that we're holding on to a change or we're holding on to a possibility of things is going to turn around in our favor. We find uh, that if you look at the, the, the very uh, principles of this uh, hold on, we understand that, that it can be defined as uh, to maintain grasp and also it can be defined as to continue or persistent or it can also mean to maintain a position or an opinion we're going to break these things down just for a little bit and, and I promise we're still going to leave here in good time but when we look at the first uh, uh, principle of holding on uh, we find that it says to maintain a grasp to hold on to something firmly such as a rail or such as a leash uh, for an animal or such as a bag or a purse or, or something of value. We have to understand and we're going to turn it into the principal understanding of the spirit. Oftentimes uh, the enemy is after us uh, and the enemy is trying to get you to loosen your grasp. The enemy is trying to get you to let go of whatever uh, it is that, that God has already told you uh, that's going to come to pass and, and that he was going to work out and that he was going to do but the enemy wants you to let go of that grasp and trust and believe I found myself uh, right here in this particular uh, occurrence it was points in my life that I wanted sure enough to give up it was points in my life that I wanted to let go of some things uh, and some people but we have to understand 
understand that when God is working in your life, when God is doing some things for you, that hold on means something better. Because when it says maintain your grasp, some of us need to maintain our grasp on our spiritual walk in our life. Something has happened that's trying to get your hands off. Something has happened to try to pry your hands off of it. But God is saying hold on yet a little while. Trust and believe he's getting ready to work that thing out. We have to understand that when God is in this thing, the world sometimes comes up against you. Life sometimes press upon you. The enemy is sure enough after you. And the enemy is trying, of course, to rob, kill, and destroy. But thank you, Jesus. We understand that if we hold on yet a little while, God said that I will give you life and that life more abundantly. But some of y'all don't understand that. When God said he'll give us life and give us life more abundantly, he was saying he'll give us life in every situation. Everything that we find ourselves going through, God will breathe life into it. If Ezekiel was here right now, Ezekiel will say, I remember a time where God placed me in a valley of dry bones and he asked me, prophesy to these bones. Shall these bones live? I said, God, you know all about it. But Ezekiel went on to say, I did what God told me to do. I held on to his unchanging hand. I believed the prophetic word of God when he said, prophesy to these bones. He said, bring forth life. And hallelujah in the scriptures. The Bible said there was a noise. See, reason why you're not hearing a noise in your life is because you're not holding on to God. You're worried about what man is going to think. You're worried about what this one is saying. But if you hold on to God, trust and believe God will do it. But finish off in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, when we heard a noise of clattering of these dry bones, the scripture tells us that these bones begin to find its own bones. It means I didn't have your thigh bone. You didn't have my ankle bone. It went back to where it needed to be. Some of us are worried about somebody else's blessing, but trust and believe God has a blessing just for you. And it's yours all by yourself because what God has for me you can't take it from me what God has for you I can't pull it away from you but the Bible said that then sin you begin to grow it said then the joints became to get together and he said I looked out and I seen a great number of people and they were just standing there and God told Ezekiel I'm getting back to Job God told Ezekiel he said prophesy to the four corners of the wind tell that wind to come and house itself in this valley. Hallelujah in here. Oh, I'm getting happy right now by myself. He said, tell those winds to form themselves. They went into the valley, went into the nostrils of those people, and they begin to live. And God said, can I do what I did to these bones? Tell Israel, I've seen them hold on. They've been holding on for 430 years. Tell them I know all about it. I'm coming to rescue them. Trust and believe God. He will do it each and every time. You don't have to worry about it. As long as you're holding on to God. Trust and believe it's going to work out. I can't see it out of these peepers. But I understand that it shall work. I understand that it shall come to pass. Hallelujah in here. But we understand here. The enemy is trying to get your grasp off of God's word. The enemy is trying to get you to focus on your problem. The enemy is trying to get you to focus on the situation. But if if you would just hold on hold on God will do it every time I'm reminded in Psalms 91 verse 14 to 16 it says because he has set forth his love upon me do not God love you on today God loves each and every one of us. He said he has set his love upon me. Therefore will he deliver me. So in those times that I'm suffering, in those times of great pain, all I do is hold on to God and trust and believe. 
He comes and delivers me. He said he'll set me on high. How many of us today are sitting on top of some of our problems? Those problems thought they had us down. But now we're sitting on top of them. The enemy thought he had you destroyed. But now I'm sitting on top of them. I'm sitting on top of a table that is prepared before me in the presence of those same enemies because God is working things out. Oh, hallelujah. It goes on to say, and because of his name, he will do these things for us. He shall come upon me. He shall come upon us and he shall answer him and we'll be with him through troubles. I don't know about you, but we are living in some troubled times. It's troubling times out there when things are not as they seem. It's troubling times out there when things are tacking everywhere. It's troubling times out there when you can go into a school building and shoot up the entire place. It's troubling times out there. When you can come into God's house and pull a gun on the people. It's troubling times out there. We're driving down the road and stray bullets are hitting people. It's troubling times out there. And if you don't think you're going to suffer some trouble. Let me tell you something. The word of God is true. It said through life's toils and snares. We have to understand something. We're going to suffer through some trials and tribulations. We're going to go through some things. But it's for the perfecting of our faith. Hallelujah. Oh glory be to God. It says, with long life shall he satisfy me, and he shall show him uh, my salvation. Now, salvation is something here. I want you to know salvation is on its way. If you just hold on a little while longer. But let me move on to my next point. My next point of this hold on. First, we had to maintain your grasp. But now we have to make it says this. Continue or persist. We have to continue in this thing. Oh, stay with me for a minute here. We have to continue in this thing. Even though it's difficult days ahead. Even though it's difficulties all around us. We have to continue in this thing. Oh, I'm getting ready to make somebody uncomfortable. But I'm going to stand firm on God. And trust and believe God. For what God is saying. And what God is doing in our life. But we find that the life and this world and this enemy has come to try to beat us down. Trump to try to get us from continuing in this walk with God. But we have to understand something. That if I hold on a little while, God is going to send my help. It's going to come by my way. It's going to bring me out of whatever I'm suffering through. Hallelujah in here. You think how... I continue on. I can persist in this thing. Sometimes it gets overwhelming. Sometimes it gets out of control. But I'm going to stay firm in God. I'm going to understand something. That God is right there with me. As I go through these battles. For I understand in his Bible. That if I praise a prayer unto God. God will hear me. When my prayers go up. God will send some blessings down on me. Hallelujah in here. I don't know what you're going through. I don't understand it, but God knows all about it. We cannot let the hardships of this world, the trials and the tribulations and struggles begin to overwhelm us so that we want to not continue in God, that we lose our persistence in following after the way which is called straight. We can't let go of God. We cannot turn around now. We're at the brink of our blessing. We're at the threshold of where God wants us to be. Oh, y'all getting quiet in here, but it's all right with me. We find down in God's word, I have arrived to the point of this that even though things may bother me even though things may uh, come at me all kinds of ways my God is able for Paul wrote in Philippians 3 and 12 he said not though I have already attained even I have already been perfect he said but I follow after this 
that if that this thing may comprehend uh, that which I am comprehended of Christ, uh, he said, but brethren, uh, count it not myself to apprehend, uh, but to one thing I do do. He said this, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth to those things that are before me. He said, all I'm doing is pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah here. We have to understand that by me holding on, I'm pressing to the mark. By me holding on, I'm trying to reach the expected end. Trying to get where God wants me to be. Hallelujah in here. Let me move to the third point. The third point is to maintain our position or opinion. Now this is getting ready to mess a few folks up. But I'm still standing on God's word. I don't care what the world say. I don't care how the world thinks. I'm going to continue to believe God. Because now they say right is wrong. And they say wrong is right. Hallelujah in here. Oh, okay, y'all scared to touch it. But here on today, I still believe in the principal foundation of marriage. I still believe it's a man and a woman. Hallelujah in this place. God is still yet God. He didn't change nothing. Hallelujah in here. I still believe that only a woman can have a child. I don't care what the world tries to say. I don't care how many TikToks you look at. I don't care how many Instagrams you come across. Only a woman can have a child. I don't care how much hair they put on her face. I don't care how much hair they try to grow on her head. Only a woman has a womb. Hallelujah in here. Oh, I'm losing some followers. But thank you, Jesus. I'd rather stand on God's principles. I'd rather stand on the Holy Ghost than stand on man's ideology and man's thought. Hallelujah in here. What's right is right. And what's wrong is still wrong. Hallelujah in here. Hallelujah, because in my opinion, I trust and believe God, and God is not pleased with how this world is going, and soon and very soon, he said, I come quickly, some of y'all better grab hold to that, he said, I come quickly, hallelujah in here, I don't know what the quickness of the time but God said I'm coming quickly because man is getting too far out there. Hallelujah. You got to quit living like the YOLO life. I do whatever I want to do. You can live that way if you want. But according to the precepts, principles, and statutes of this Bible, it tells me different. I can't live any way I want. I got to live holiness. Holiness is still right. Hallelujah. They almost had me, mother. The world almost had me. They almost had me thinking that these things were wrong. But when I looked in God's word, and I understand God's word, I said, God, I'm going to stand strong. I'm going to continue to believe your principles. Because in Philippians 1, it says, being confident of this very thing, he that has begun a good work will perform it till the end, until the day of Jesus Christ. So if this Bible was right then, this Bible is right right now. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm almost done meddling. I'm almost done meddling. But I'm standing confident in what God's word says. I'm not going to let the world sway me to fall after the sinfulness of their wrong thinking. I'm going to stay on God's will. Hallelujah here. Paul said in Philippians 3, verse 16 and 18. Read it for yourself. But he said, nevertheless, where to have we already apprehended? He said, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. I don't know about you, but I'm still walking by the same rules. I'm still walking by the same principle. I'm still walking by the same thing in which God's word says. And if 
if it was wrong for God, it's sure enough wrong for me. Hallelujah in here. But he said these were the times that things was going to start happening. That this kind of stuff was going to be going on. And he said, but watch sure enough. Uh, he said watch sure enough uh, because he's coming back uh, and he's going to catch some folks uh, with their work undone uh, he's going to catch some folk uh, out there teeter tottering with the sin he's going to catch some folks uh, that's out there doing things they ought not do uh, but he said brethren uh, be follows together with me uh, and mark them that walk as you do uh, hallelujah as an example uh, Verse 18 says, For many walk, whom have no I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping. He said that there may be enemies of the cross of Christ. So what Paul is saying, he said there's going to come a time, and he's crying in his spirit. He said there's going to come a time where we're going to be living in the same mess that we're living in. He said there's going to be people that turned away from God. Don't we see a falling away? Don't we see people itching ears? Going after all kinds of stuff. Going after all kinds of witchcraft. All kinds of soothsayers. And to uh, palm readers. We see all that going on today. But thank you Jesus. I put my hold on God. Oh I'm almost done. Paul was crying. Because he was concerned. But let's get to Job real quick. Job said, if a man dies, shall he live again? He said, in all my appointed time, will I wait until my change come? Sometimes it takes us to hold on a little while. Sometimes it takes us to hold on for the change to come. But trust and believe. Did not Job's change come? He got double, somebody said, for his trouble. I don't know about you, but now I'm ready to see my double. I'm ready to see what God has in store. Hallelujah in here. Let us be real quick. Sometimes you get impatient. Sometimes you get mad at God. Sometimes we may even raise our voice at God. Oh, y'all looking at me scared. But sometimes you get frustrated. Sometimes you yell at God. Sometimes you act like he can't hear you because you're so frustrated. You're so mad. But trust and believe. It's all right to be angry. For the Bible said anger but sin not. It's all right to talk to God and tell him all about it. But in the midst of all of that, I shall not sin against God. I shall not be so frustrated that I begin to accuse God and begin to be so frustrated that I begin to talk about God and say God ain't the God that he said he was but I trust and believe that on this day hallelujah that everything that God said hallelujah shall come to pass I'm gonna hold on I'm gonna hold on thank you Jesus we cast away his voice. We say we don't want to hear it no more. We get in our Jonah stage. We say, God, I heard what you said, but I'm going to flee from your presence. I heard what you said about those people in Nineveh. And Jonah got so upset about a gourd that got ate up by a caterpillar. Then those souls and lives that was in Nineveh. Hallelujah here. God spoke to Jonah. He said, Jonah, why are you sitting here crying? Why are you sitting here upset about this gourd? You have no concern for those souls that are repenting right now. Hallelujah in here. I thank God that God never stopped loving us. I thank God that God is still yet on our side. Yes, it's getting frustrating. Yes, I get mad at situations. But I still trust God. I still not doubt God. I still believe God. For Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know. Come on, y'all quote it faster than me. And we know that all things work for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Do I have some called according to a purpose? Do I have some called folks in 
in here today that don't mind saying I'm called. Don't mind saying I'm holding on. Don't mind saying I'm just struggling. Hallelujah in here. Thank you. But we have to understand in the last part of this thing about holding on is now I'm waiting for something. I'm waiting for a blessing from God. It's almost the type of waiting that you have when somebody's on the phone. It's almost that waiting in time. And some of us today, if they said we had a paycheck coming, if they said something was coming in the mail, y'all remember what we used to do around income tax time? They used to mail them things out. It wasn't direct deposit. You would stand by that mailbox and wait on it. You would calculate the time. You would say, well, I put it in and I finished it on this day. It take about two, three weeks for them to get it. It take about a week and a half for them to process it. Then it take about another week for it to get here. So in about six weeks from now, you out there at the mailbox, peeking and looking in it, looking in it every hour. How come it didn't come? And then when the mail comes and you fumble through it and you didn't see it, you shut the mail, you slam the box and say it still ain't got here yet. They playing around with my check. Oh, I'm the only one. But when we understand something, when I'm waiting for something, I'm waiting like Job said. I'm waiting for the changing of my season. I'm waiting for this thing to pass. Hallelujah here. He said, I got to wait until my change come. We have to wait like good soldiers, understanding that God will work it out. Do I have some people here today that trust and believe God that is holding on to God right now for whatever it is you're still yet holding on God said keep holding on he said don't lose your grasp he said don't be twist and twirl between opinions he said stay firm in me he said and watch the expected end he said I will bless you sure enough I will give you multitudes of blessings I will shower you down with blessings hallelujah in here your blessing may not be the same as mine but whatever you need God is able to bless you whatever you need God is able to do it do I have some holding on people do I have some people that's holding on you don't understand it you can't see your way out you don't know how it's coming but I'm holding on I'm grabbing firm to the altar of God and say no matter what winds come no matter what storms may blow no matter what tries to attack me I'm gonna keep holding on you can buck like the horse you can try to get me off but it said only takes eight seconds to get the bell it only takes us a moment for in God's word did not he said he moves in immediately did not he said he moves in expectantly hallelujah here so it don't take long but you still need to hold on and watch God work it out glory to his name Glory to his name. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep holding on. Hallelujah. Keep holding on. Hallelujah. And watch God work. Hallelujah. These things out. We thank God for his presence and his spirit. Hallelujah. We ask if there's someone in the room that don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Before we close, before we dismiss. Hallelujah. We want to make the call to you. Amen. If you want the Lord in your life. Amen. The door is open to receive his blessing and his spiritual gift of the come on let us just pray Father God we just thank you Lord for your grace and mercy God we ask that you would touch the unsaved 
Lord, if there was one in this room, dear God, that was still torn between two opinions, God, we ask that you would speak to their hearts right now, God. Lord, we ask that you would just bless them, give them one more time, dear God, to cry out, what must I do to be saved? Lord, and we ask that you save their souls. Lord, for we understand that this world is heading to an immediate end. But God, we just thank you right now for your presence. Still yet being with us, giving us another turn, another opportunity. God, we ask that you seal them until that time. God, but we ask, Lord, that you would bless us as we prepare to leave this place. But never from your sight, God, travel in mercies yet again over the highways. Let us into our homes there, God, with love, joy, and peace before us. Remove and dispatch anything that's not like you. God, but we just thank you for our laying down on tonight. God, for your protection. Lord, but we ask, Lord, that you wake us up tomorrow with strength in this body. To share your word with somebody else. To encourage somebody else to hold on. Lord, we ask that you do it. And bring us back again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart. God bless you.